Welcome to Talking Heads on USA Global TV, starring the one and only wonderful Dr. Jacqueline. It's a prestigious place where world-class influencers and experts meet, and where you'll find the most trusted advisors and coaches for all things in life and business. Visit usaglobaltv.com to sign up for our newsletter, get the value you need, and be first in line to learn about events and giveaways and other valuable content. Connect with us. Email Dr. Jacqueline at usaglobaltv.com to talk about how you can become part of USA Global TV. That's USA Global TV, where the doctor is always in. Hello, everyone, and welcome, or hopefully it's welcome back to USA Global TV and Radio. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. I'm the president, founder, and chief listening officer here at our network, where we currently have 29 live broadcasts each week. Our show today is presenting Pet Psychic Amina, and sadly, she is not backstage to present her, so we will bring her out shortly. We have a wonderful guest who's been here before and is joining us from the UK. And the topic is so relevant and timely with what's going on, especially here in the United States on the East Coast with Hurricane Ian. Our guest's name is Catherine Smith, and she's a first aid instructor for pets. That's right. You heard me, a pet first aid instructor. She is going to come out and give us a wealth of information to help us and help us know what to do in times of emergency and also for our pets to feel safe, that they feel comforted, that they have this knowing that we will take care of them. So let's welcome Catherine Smith. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Hello. So nice to see you again. Thanks for joining us. No, thanks for having me and having me back again. It's a pleasure, especially I'm all about education and bringing information to people that they they need and they don't know where to get the information. And this topic today about pet first aid, I think is something that uh, having been a pet owner myself, we kind of take for granted. And then something happens, we're like, oh, I've got to call the vet and then you can't get in. And then it's a trip to the emergency room. And there's probably things that we could be doing in the interim. So before we dive into our topic, Catherine, I'd love for you to share a little bit about what inspired you to get involved in this field. Okay. Well, I, I have a, a small um, pet business myself, so dog walking and pet care. So, I mean, actually quite worryingly, it's not regulated in this country. I don't know if it's the same as in the US, but um, but I took it upon myself to do pet first, pet first aid. Um, and I urge anybody using a dog walker or a pet sitter to make sure they have got pet first aid as well. Um, so when it came up for renewal, um, it wasn't really anywhere near me that did it. I could only do it online and I wanted to do an in-person course. So, And I have an interest anyway, because my own dog was quite poorly after we first got her. Um, and I had to do a lot of research myself into that because what she had was quite rare. So I already had an interest in pet first aid and also natural um, kind of health for pets. Um, so I just thought, well, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn to take the classes myself. Uh, so that that's where it started, really, and it, I I qualified during lockdown. Uh, so yes, about two years ago now. Thank you for sharing that. And you know, it's interesting because so many of us found a passion or an extension of our career or a new career as a result of the pandemic. And it sounds like you're right yes. there as well. Yeah, and um, so we weren't allowed to go out and dog walk. So I thought we're going to take this opportunity to to learn some new skills, really, which I can um, kind of share with other people as well. So you took this course and then you have some regular clients and you walk their dogs, their pets. And I'm wondering, yes. have you had to do any first aid on any of your clients' pets? No, touch would have actually been really lucky. The only time, the only thing I had was when I had a dog with a cut paw, it trod on some glass. Um, so it wasn't terribly serious, but paw injuries don't tend to be really serious, but they do bleed a lot. So they can be a little bit um it can be a bit frightening but um because i knew there's lots of blood vessels in the pool i wasn't too traumatized by it and we just uh put some antiseptic spray on bandaged it up and by the time we got home it had stopped bleeding and actually he was he was fine well that's great that you were able to save the day <laughs> So I know that you actually have a first aid kit there. I'd I love do. to spotlight you and for <laughs> you to talk a 
through what's in there, what's included. Okay, so this is um, this is a basic. Oh gosh, I've got to stop A basic uh, pet first aid kit. If you want, if someone wanted to, though, I mean, I would urge people to have a separate one from their human first aid kit. And if you wanted to, though, you could use a human first aid kit and adapt it because a lot of the things are very similar. But I'm just going to show you what's basically in a basic one. Um, so you have the same kind of bandages that we have for humans. Um, but these are Ceylon pods. These are quite useful. If you've got a dog with an eye injury, um, it's really important to keep the eye lubricated. And with eye injuries, you would always go to the vets. It's quite important. But if you can keep it lubricated on the way, uh, these saline pods are brilliant for that. And you can also use it to flush out wounds as well and keep them um, clean. Got a pair of tweezers uh, for fawns and that kind of thing. Um, so for a blanket, like with humans, uh, if a dog goes into shock, it's really important to keep them warm. And so it's quite or dog or cat or any animal really so it's quite important to have a full blanket in there and that's again that's just a human one that you can use for pets as well um you've also got um some sterile gloves so it's very unlikely that you would catch anything from your dog or cat but if you're dealing with an open wound you'd probably want to use some gloves um because you could cause an infection um you've also got in here so these actually don't always come as standard uh, in a pet first aid kit, but they do in this one actually, which is a tick remover. So at a minimum, I'd urge everyone to get a tick remover um, because the sooner you remove a tick, the better. Um, you should, don't want to be removing them with tweezers because you can actually leave the head inside, um, which can cause infection. Um, there was also quite a few kind of old wives tale about um if you wanted to get rid of a tick dabbing it with alcohol or that kind of thing which will injure the tick but the trouble is as a tick becomes stressed it actually vomits the contents of its stomach into the host which again is not a good thing because ticks tend to cause well tend to carry certain diseases such as Lyme's disease which is quite nasty for humans and for animals so if you've got a tick remover the sooner you can move that the better um and then what else we got? The last thing in here is just a pair of scissors, uh, just for cutting bandages. So as well as that, you can also get bandages now, which is a co cohesive bandage which sticks to itself. And that's really useful for pets because it's quite difficult um, bandaging a live moving animal at times. And so that can make things a little bit easier. Uh, the other, only other thing really I would think about maybe having is um, we call them, I don't know if it's called the same in the US, but we have what we call buster collars, which are blow up um, collars to put around the neck. Uh, so they're quite handy. So if a dog has got an eye injury, um, by the time you get it to the vets, it's likely they'll have had a go at it really and, and tried to scratch your eyes. So for something like that, a buster collar is really easy because it folds down flat so you can carry it with you in your first aid kit. So yeah, as a minimum, I'd have those things in there. Wow, that's very comprehensive. I, I do have a question about the tick mm. remover. Yeah. So it's hard. It's in the package, but how does it actually yeah. work that it gets the head out? Right. So I'll take this. I'll just hand it to have a look. Okay, I can't get it out of my now. But basically, there's two sizes. Um, if you can see that, yes. you've got it's like a hook. So you put it underneath. Uh, so the tick will have buried its head into the into the host and you put it underneath the body and the head will be inside and you just twist it round and pull at the same time and ah. it should come out quite easily yeah it, it's, it's easy to do i'll tell you what everybody should have one of those if you have a pet yeah. i've never heard of it before I yeah just know people it, are with the tweezers digging in there and yeah you can make it a lot worse um but the thing with ticks is because they carry disease as well you want to get them out as soon as possible um, so if you've got one at home, it saves you going to the bats. Just whip it out, off you go. Learn something new every day. I love it. So you shared that if a pet has an eye injury, they'll probably have to go to the vet. Are there some yeah. other telltale signs that you say to yourself, I got to make this call or I've got to put the, the dog in the car and go to the vets? 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, I will always err on the side of caution anyway. I mean, my vets are very good. If I'm worried about something, I will ring them and they'll tell me if they think they need to see her or not. Um, but certainly eye injuries, I definitely take to the vet. Like repeated vomiting and diarrhea, um, though it might sound not sound that serious, actually they can become dehydrated quite quickly. And that is quite serious um, because that can cause them to go into shock as well. So actually a tip, if you think your pet might be dehydrated, what you can do on babies, we do a pinch test where they pinch the back of the hand and it should just spring straight back. But on dogs or cats, you just do it on the back of the neck. So if the if you pinch it and the skin remains tented, uh, we call it tented, which is kind of like it just stays up and creeps back down slowly, then that's a sign that it's dehydrated. And I would take definitely get take a vet, an animal to the vet if it's dehydrated. Um, and also sticky gums would be a sign as well. Um, another thing to look out for is the gums can actually tell you quite a lot. Um, so if a dog has pale gums um, or a cat has pale gums, that's a sign that something could be wrong. It could be a sign of shark um, or that kind of thing. But with a cat, obviously, that's really hard <laughs> to look at a cat's gums. They're not quite as forthcoming as dogs. So just a little tip with if you've got a cat and you want to see what colour its gums is, if you pull down the, the eyelid, the inside of that lower lid will be exactly the same colour as the gums. So that's how you can tell on a cat. So gums in cats and dogs, they should be a salmon pink colour. They shouldn't be pale. Um, so a good tip is if you take, I, I actually took a photo of our dog's gums because um, when she became ill, it was quite sudden. And that's what alerted to me to the fact that something wasn't right because I looked at her gums and they were really pale. Um, and that, that really helped get her treatment sooner. So if you can take a picture of your pet's gums and just keep it on your phone, um, then you've got something to compare to. Um, so you can see what their normal colour is. So that's a, a good little tip. Or you could put a copy of the photo in your first aid kit. Wow, what a great idea. I love that. That's another thing I learned today. Thank you. So uh, a follow-up question that I have for you is, when you sense that the pet, your pet, someone's pet you're caring for is injured and you have the first aid kit, you know what to do, is there a possibility that the pet might try to bite you? Yeah, definitely. So uh, even your own pets that, you know, loves you. If a pet is in pain, that is something you do need to be aware of. Um, with cats, they're, they're a bit more tricky than dogs, but you can wrap them in a towel. Um, with dogs, you could muzzle them. If you haven't got a muzzle available, you could try, you could do a figure of eight with a bandage or with a scarf or lead. Um, but you can normally tell, well, if you can read their body language, so there's certain signs that show that the, the dog, dog or cat is, is quite stressed. So with dogs, they often, if they're in pain, they often lick their lips or yawn. And um, that could be a sign that they're, in, that they're in pain or they're stressed. Um, and actually dogs will often, um, well, my dog used to squint actually, which isn't very common. My dog used to squint when he was in pain, my previous dog. But also they sometimes uh, press their head against something. So kind of putting pressure on the head. So against a wall or something, that's also a sign that um, your dog would be in pain. So anything, you know, if you if in doubt and you think they're gonna have a go, then I would muzzle. Or you could try using that buster collar. Um, say if you're looking at the back paw, they're less likely to be able to get at you if they've got that buster collar on. So yeah, you do need to be cautious of that. All right, thank you so much for giving us that tip. And I'm happy to announce that Pet Psychic Amina is here. Yay. So let's welcome her to the show. Hello. How nice Hi, to see Amina. you. <laughs> We've had a lovely chat about first aid. We got to see a first aid kit and a tick remover, which I've never seen before. Have you, Amina? Yep. <laughs> I try to avoid the use of them, but yes. yeah, you can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we learned that your pet can become agitated when they're injured, right? And, and you need to keep them calm and then also keep yourself safe. And if there's an eye injury, definitely go to the vet, but maybe call the vet anyway, regardless of whatever is going on. Um, also, you can tell the color of a cat's gums by pulling down the lower lid and it should be a nice salmon color as opposed to what else it might be, right? Yeah, yeah. salmon is perfect. 
Perfect. You know, I've noticed when you go to the dentist, um, obviously they're checking your mouth, but a doctor will also check your gums, just like a dentist yeah. will to see the color of it to see how well you're doing. Yeah. Or not, as the case may be. Yeah. The body yeah. has an amazing way, no matter what body you're looking at, of telling you what's going on. And that's what all these doctors, whatever they are, from psychologists to PhDs of all types, are looking at. They're doing the study and they're doing the research of saying, wait a minute, I've seen this four times. Can you imagine to have seen um, anemia for the first time? And you go, ah, something looks different. Yeah, your coloring is different. Your mouth is different. Your your fingernails are different. Um, if you're you're losing your nails, if your hair is all falling out, your body's trying to tell you something loudly if you're going through any of that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think also with pets, it's they they show by their behavior that something going on, but many times we sense a change in behavior, but we overlook it maybe because we're distracted by something else. But yet, Amina, you've shared with us on this platform many times that pets are very in tune to their human partner's health and they yeah. can tell when something's going awry. Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge, huge, huge advocate of, of harping on one subject with women specifically. Um, they'll do it for men, of course, but with women, it, it becomes more more evident. So I'm hoping men will strapulate from it. But if you have a pet coming up and bumping you in the breast, for, for example, over and over and over and just kind of being, you know, not the huggy <laughs> puppy, dog, cat, whatever it is, go to the doctor yesterday because they can smell cancer. They can smell it at a really minute size. From what I understand, only been told secondhand, but it, it smells terrible. It's, uh, I'm not sure if it's the same as rotting flesh. Sadly, I have experienced that one. Um, but it's really terrible. An animal has those senses to survive in the wild. They're going to know when you are coming down sick. I've actually, if you look at therapy animals, and Catherine, I'm sure you've worked with people who have these issues, not just the pets, they will pull their person to the ground gently but they'll get a hold of their shirt, pull them to the ground because they have, they have epilepsy. And even if they don't know they have epilepsy, sometimes that's the first time when you hit a sidewalk, I'll tell you, I've fainted a few times. <laughs> it's not good. It's, the sidewalk wins every time. Mm. So an animal can save your life on many, many things besides emotional. They can save you also from your own medical. And so why can't we do the same? So be more, more diligent about what you see own it with yourself. I really want to encourage pet owners. If you're in doubt, take them to the vet. That That's the, the quintessential first step. Take it to a professional. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Catherine, I think it's so fantastic that you, you've taken the education and you are a pet first aid instructor. I did not know this was something that existed. Now that you've done this, have is there a community of of similar minded people who have taken these courses? Uh, well, I've got my own little Facebook page when, that when people do the course, they can join Join that. Well, anyone can join it really, if they want to. Um, but with like lots of tips. And when things change, so like, um, if information changes, you know, sometimes let's get updates and I'll put stuff on there like that. But yeah, there's quite a few sites on Facebook actually, um, completely dedicated to pet health um so we have one here in the uk i think you can get it in the us as well well called frank and jellies which is really into natural health and that kind of thing and if you've got something that the vets you've been to the vets but you, can't, you kind of can't get to the bottom of it they're really good at helping you find a kind of natural solution because sometimes we're very good i mean the vets are fantastic don't get me wrong but sometimes same with the gps we're, we're kind of um treating the symptoms rather than the cause and so much of, of especially for us and for pets it's about gut health as well so you need to take it right back to what they're eating that's quite important as well um i'm quite passionate about pet nutrition because i really do think we need to know more about that really no oh, and catherine i i so applaud you for saying that because hard work is got to start with what what did you ingest 
Dr. Yeah. Jacqueline, you can't possibly have that skin just because you're on camera. It, it takes time. <laughs> it takes effort to take care of our skin over time. I, I grew up in the high desert. There's a lot of sun. There is no getting away from the sun in the desert because <laughs> there's not a lot of trees unless you put them up. So you learn, if you don't learn in your own life to protect yourself, protect your pet. They can yeah. overheat. They can get cancer. They can get, a, a, the worst I've seen is the burnt paws. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. See, Catherine, I, I thought that yeah. is going to take a response already because my shepherd, when I was really young, we um, rescued a, a purebred was dumped. A purebred shepherd with a tattoo and ear, the whole thing. I was able to trace its background. Boy, the breeder was angry <laughs> when I found out who the breeder was because they dumped this young dog. They just couldn't, they didn't have the skills. What we're trying to teach is everything and health is part of that. And in my naivete, he needed to run. So we eventually did agility. And if you don't know what that is, hurls and hoops and things. And that's great for their mind. Great for me. The problem is, as I was getting us up to speed, I was riding on my bike with him. That's the way I could keep up. But I had to watch his paws. I almost got what's called a slipped paw. Oh, that's bad. It's literally the bottom just gone. And then can you imagine trying to walk around like that? You can't walk on three legs. They can't barely walk on two. So these are the things you have to make sure you know either you've got really good first aid kits or you've got really good um, checking in with your pet. Don't go four miles, not the first three months. Go, go five blocks, go for a jog, go on a tricycle. You've got to work them up as an athlete the same as you've got to do to yourself. But those paws, you you lose a paw. It's a really, really tough recovery. They're chewing, they're licking, they don't like the bandages. They're not good patients. No. So, <laughs> Catherine, what are your thoughts? Yeah, we here, over here, we've kind of had a, a lot of extreme weather recently, with extreme heat, and we're not used to it, to be honest. It's been a bit of a shock. Um, and I think everybody... It's probably quite different in the USA, probably more aware, but everybody here is kind of aware you should never leave your dog in the car, but the, a lot of people aren't aware that you shouldn't walk your dog when it's too hot either. Thank you. Um, they, they really don't. You know, I've seen people walking their dogs at 25 to 40 degrees. And it's too hot. It, it really is. Yeah. You know, a question I have for both of you, can dogs get a sunburn? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially if you're going to go to the light breeds where you have the more blonde uh, and white noses, you don't have the dark noses. And, and then the rest of the, you've got the Bichon Frigé, very, very thin coat, very uh, white, white skin underneath that coat. Um, Catherine, you've got some other breeds off the top of your head. The, these are, you got to really, really watch them. You can't go the hairless dogs. Oh, no. And what, you're going to put a sweater on in 100 degree heat? Yeah. So you get them heat. Yeah. You yeah. What do you do? You keep them inside. Yeah, you can keep them inside. But over here as well, though, we also have um, pet sunblock, but it is specifically designed for pets. You shouldn't use a human one. Right. So for little pinky bits. So my dog has, um, she loves sunbathing and she has a pink nose. So we just put it on her nose for her. Um, mm -hmm. And also with cats, you just have to be careful even in the, because cats, even the cats that are indoors on the windowsill, can get burnt so you can mm. actually put it on the just on the tips of their ears because quite a lot of cats end up getting skin cancer in their ears from sunburn and stuff but yeah if it's really hot you, you don't want to be they, they need to be indoors really you've got to walk them really early or maybe even not at all if it's too hot yeah really early really late mm -hmm. and anybody who lives in in any hot climate arizona southern california desert what death valley it, it has its name for a reason yeah. um you have to be smart. You have to realize your pet is not a bulletproof entity. If you were in the snow, would you, would you not, would you just let your dog run around the snow and say, oh, he's got a fur coat? Well, some can do that. Some are built for that. You pull in sleds, but I'll bet you, I have seen, and, and Catherine, you may use, know of this, that the sled dogs all have buoys now. They all have gear besides the harnesses that are ergonomically across their body. Why wouldn't we do the same with being out in the weather? Yeah, definitely. 
So I'm just going to ask a question. What's next? Doggy sunglasses and doggy hats? Oh, or? no, they're already here. Are yeah. They are? yeah, and wow, Crocs I for dogs. I've even seen Crocs for dogs. <laughs> Come on. You, you have or haven't seen Crocs? No, I them. have. I've seen oh, a little yeah. of these little Crocs. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! I wonder how stable they are, though. I've always yeah, I don't. Wondered. I don't think they're very practical, to be honest. Yeah, because <laughs> slip ones, right? Not that with a little thing on the back. Uh, well, I don't know. I haven't seen them. <laughs> I'll have to. I'll send you a photo after. Do because oh, that's yeah. hilarious. Because I'm. I'm going to have to write about that. That's hilarious. <laughs> Crocs for dogs and thing. And you're going to have to prove that one. <laughs> but you I can't find it now. <laughs> <laughs> but you actually have seen sunglasses that are made for dogs oh, and absolutely. hats? Yeah, absolutely. in fact, I saw a dog. I, I wanted to ask them why they're wearing the sunglasses, but I didn't want to be rude. But I went to like, um, it was like a dog event um, for a dog magazine. And it was obviously wearing them for a reason. It had like these wraparound Ray-Bans. Mm. It was having its photo taken in the booth. Um, so, yeah, they were really cool. But I, I think I had a feeling it was a medical reason, not just because it wanted to look cool. Uh, but I didn't get a chance to ask them, but I would have loved to have known. And, and and dogs can get eye diseases the same as people. And, uh, you know, everything from sensitive eyes to cataracts, all of, all of this exists. So if you're a, what's wonderful to be a pet owner in this day and time, we're not in the 60s and 70s when somebody would have laughed you right out of the doctor's office, much less the eyeglass store to say, you want a what? Um, because we hadn't thought about animals that way. As, as being our companion, so many pets are now children of, uh, of women and men who have decided not to have children. So, yeah, knowing that they need glasses, that's for your vet. This is why we keep saying talk to your vet, because if you don't have an expert in your life, get one. You're going to have a question at some point that you're going to need a doctor for. Yeah, it's yeah. So, so important to have that relationship with a vet as well. Yes. Um, yeah, definitely. And as we know, sometimes you got to try a few. You've got to yes. find the one yes. that speaks your language. And, and I'm not talking about English, French, and German. I'm not talking about language. I'm talking about they explain things the way you can understand and that you'll actually do. Because I have been told to do things and I'm looking at them like, you're crazy. But when somebody explained it to me, I'm like, I am all on, all on board because I can get behind that recommendation. If somebody sees glasses or booties as an extra expense and not necessary, even if they had the money, you got to give them a reason. Why? Why do I need to go to this? And why do then I need to actually put them on? Because that, that's the whole point. You're going to buy them and not put them on. So it's, yeah, you have booties. I would like to know if, as part of first aid instruction, you learn how to do CPR on. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, to tell us more. I, got, I got overexcited. Great. Um, yeah. I'm glad. We love it. <laughs> yes, we do. Because um, there's a human resuscitation dog, I think it's called Annie, uh, but there is a dog one uh, called Casper. Oh. Um, and yeah, you learn to do CPR on that. Uh, so it's quite realistic because he has a pulse as well. Um, so you learn how to check the pulse as well. And um, so, yeah, that's why I prefer doing, rather than Zoom stuff, I prefer doing classroom stuff, really, because I think it's quite important to have that practical experience. Absolutely. Yeah, and I feel like uh, I was trained on CPR, I think, twice, but I'd have to have a refresher because it was maybe five years ago, and I don't remember. Yeah. Is there a certain amount of time that goes by you have to go for the course again? Yes. Yeah, yes. it, it's in the UK, it's recommended every three years, the same as human first aid, really, because th things have changed. Um, since I did my original pet first aid, which was quite a while ago, I'm not gonna lie, um, the, um, the CPR, the compression rate has changed and the breathing rate, they've changed that now. Uh, so things do get updated as we learn more, really. So yeah, it's quite important to uh, keep up to date. So yeah, especially for a pet professional, it's every three years. Absolutely. Okay, that's good to know. And there's so much you'll learn, just like what we're doing now is having three of us in three different lives and having three different questions, three different experiences. And and Dr. Jacqueline, you've had dogs, so you have had experiences, maybe not anything you needed respiratory arrest, but 
Catherine, thank you so much for saying that there are updates, there are trainers, please. We are all about supporting the professionals who have spent their lives and money and time to study this. We're just getting the word out that, hey, by the way, there is this thing that you can do to save your dog or cat's life. And wouldn't we all want to at least have known that we could have tried? Yeah. If I found out three months later after my cat died because I watched him have a cardiac arrest or I didn't know how to give CPR or something, yeah, I, I would feel a little guilt and I'd have to work through that. Yeah. I'd rather be trained than, than ignorant. And we can't do that if we don't put the word out as much as we can. And that's what yeah. we're doing here, Dr. Jacqueline. So thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. you. And Catherine, you mentioned that you have a Facebook group that people can join if they've been certified or if they want to get certified. Yeah, Tell yeah us more it's, about um, it's a little Facebook group. There's, there's not many of us in it. <laughs> it's not like a massive thing, but it's a friendly little group. So I'm quite open to people joining, even if they haven't done the course, because I just think it's really useful to people. Um, it's got a lot of information on there. So it's Mutley's Pet First Aid. Um, so if anybody wants to join that, I'm more than happy to to uh, let them in, and that's absolutely fine. They don't have to have been on a first aid course. I think it's more important that people are aware of certain things. Perfect. Maybe you can put that into the private chat so that we can share that link for people yes. to join. That would be great. Excellent. I will try, but I <laughs> I'm not sure I can do it at the same time. But well, while you're doing that, we're going to take a quick break and I'll, hear. I'll do it now then. <laughs> So please stay with us. We'll be back very shortly. We're going to hear from Diane Floyd Babe and from Al Sini. Lovely. <laughs> Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to Story Garden. Your host, Diane Bame. I'm so happy to have you here today. Diane Floyd Bame tells wonderful stories that warm the heart, spark the imagination, and unite people and families across generations. For children, Diane's Harry the Camel connects with all of us who've ever wondered how different our lives might have been if only we'd been born something better, like a wonderful horse instead of an ordinary camel. In the end, we all learn along with Harry that there's nothing better than just being yourself. Diane's little girl in the moon looks down on earthbound children and wonders if they know she's just like them. A story of love, home, and the bond between mother and daughter its powerful theme that we're each of us different, yet all of us the same, plants a seed in children that promises to blossom within a loving and trusting grown-up. Diane's new biography, Rise, recounts the experiences of her grandmother, Ruby, to reveal the hidden strength of the human spirit. Ruby's story inspires all of us to become the best versions of ourselves. You'll find all of Diane's delightful books and much more at dianefloydbame.com. Visit D-I-A-N-N-F-L-O-Y-D-B-O-E-H-M.com. That's dianefloydbame.com. The session that we had with BCAT was really entertaining and enlightening. We were able to put together some very specific steps that we as individuals can take and it was really fun to all come together and see sort of where we're going as a team and how we can all get there together. We had a tremendous experience with the BCAT partners. One of the challenges that we have as an organization is to make sure that we have the right people in the right chairs doing the right thing. To do that well, you have to have synergy. You can try to dream up ways to make sure that your group does that, or you can rely on experts. We would recommend BCAP Partners to anybody who's looking to take their organization to the next level.
everyone, and welcome back. Thanks for staying with us through the break. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and our show is presenting Pet Psychic Amina. And I now have the pleasure to actually present her. Let's welcome her. Hello. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank always you. here, always wonderful. If you look, every if you can see there, I put the link to the Red Cross program that I had researched. Um, they're a wonderful organization for many, many people, but it also has a class on first aid for dogs and cats. So fantastic. Thank take you for advantage that. Advantage of for free things. I I can't. I, there's so many out there. Don't think you always have to go to the purchase things. I'm I'm saying those are wonderful also. But so many times I think we get caught up with, oh, I can't afford it. I don't have time. I, you know, other things. This is free. You can read it anytime. I found wonderful links in there. There'll be an article. I've put together two articles to post up on my own Facebook page so that it's free. It's easy to see. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that, Amin. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Let's welcome back our guest, Catherine Smith, who's joining us from the UK. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so, Catherine, one thing we did not cover is you have your name typed up here as Catherine Mudley's. What is that? Oh, my, <laughs> Mudley's <laughs> is my business name. <laughs> so, yeah, but the well, the whole business, the dog walking, the first aid courses, all comes under Mutley's. But um, Mutley's is actually a character from a cartoon. I don't know if you had it in the US. Okay, don't think Wacky so. Racers. No, it's yeah, a little I think dog. So. I think we're gonna have to look that up. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> it's a little dog. With, yeah, I was yeah. hoping. <laughs> oh, yeah, with a funny little laugh. So that's where that came from. <laughs> that's wonderful. Wonderful. And something that I learned about Catherine backstage is she's quite the artist as yeah. well. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I also do pet, pet portraits as well. Um, I haven't actually got any I can show you at the moment because the ones I'm working on are for Christmas. So I can't really give the game away just in case it gets mm -hmm. out but yeah i love doing um it's about the only thing i can draw though isn't that funny i think it's because i really enjoy the subject matter if you ask me to draw a human you'd be terrified awful but i do really enjoy drawing pets so yeah if you look on my website actually it's got some examples on there is it all types of pets yeah I, well yeah i do get i've done a couple of mice actually recently um someone asked me to do a horse and i was a bit um was a bit terrified because i'd never even done a horse before but actually it was it was okay and i was really pleased with it so, thank goodness it didn't look too bad um so yeah all sorts of pets yeah but mainly dogs and cats but yeah i do get some strange requests that's interesting about the well. mice yeah. yeah yeah she would really love to mice <laughs> do they have names i don't know actually i'm not quite sure they're little white mice with pink eyes you know like the ones you used to get in the laboratories bless them so they were sweet yeah do they own a snake? No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> no Maybe that's why they want the portrait. Yeah. <laughs> now, in the UK, do you um, have as a, a plethora of pets like we do? Like people are getting the exotic besides the snakes and the, and the mice and the rats. They're doing um, the lizards. They're doing the desert yeah. tortoises. They're doing, I mean, they're really going outside the box. Yeah. So many people are getting the goats and the sheep. They're figuring out the goats great assistance great uh, bonders for people who have uh, health issues oh really yeah. i didn't realize that i, I mean yeah. I, do, I do like goats but i, I, must yeah. I don't know a great deal about them. the mini <laughs> ones believe it or not are worse it's kind of like getting a, a small dog like a chihuahua thing yeah man those are biters <laughs> get a great dane please get a bull <laughs> mastiff because they'll just sit on you and yeah. they'll go we're done <laughs> you're corrected <laughs> They'll just sit on you and love you. Yeah. The little ones use the teeth and the nails. They got a little goat, go with a little more power. Um, but the big, the big animals, that's why I hopefully, Catherine, you had a wonderful experience with the horses because truly if, if they're, if they're handled like, like anybody, people or animal, if they're handled well, if they're taught to be gentle, all of those things, and it is part of them, they are, can be just gentle giants. They yeah. can be, you just got to know where all four feet are yeah <laughs> they don't realize how dangerous they are do they bless them they don't no they, they don't they, they don't have no idea how big they are well and we we find this the same with aquatics where you get the whales i'm i'm in the middle of uh finishing the research on a really uh, great piece on whales and they 
it, the article that the story that I'm coming off of that I wanted everybody to hear is a, a boat full of a uh, gentleman and a lady, they were fishing or something. It, it, they were in the water in a boat and a whale came up to their boat, kind of scared the crap out of them. <laughs> when I saw they're like, Oh God. Cause he literally, their boat was very small. I'm talking a boat, not a yeah. boat. Um, and because they were just fishing in, in trout and different things that would have been small, like that size. And the whale came up, turned over, and then they had an entire net just totally strangling this, this whale. And he moved so they could see it and, wait, and went up to the boat, didn't tip it, just went up and laid his head on the boat, which is, I can't imagine how much skill that whale had to have. And they proceeded to spend the next three hours cutting that fish net off of that whale. And, and it, it was a female actually. And, um, she followed them for about five or six miles and just kept coming up and chirping and cause that's kind of how they sound underwater and just, and they interpreted it as just gratitude. Thank you. Gratitude because they're understanding not only have we caused those nets, that's what happens when people just throw them over the side of their boat and go, eh, it's the ocean. It'll take it. It's like when you throw a gum wrapper on the street, ah, it's no big deal. Somebody else will pick it up or, or it'll biodegrade. No, it doesn't. Neither of those things. Um, but the whales are understanding now that not only are we the cause, but some of us will be the, re be the reason they can continue to live. But why should they have to hunt us down to say, hey, could you could you move the net? Because <laughs> this is not the first time I've heard this. This is about the sixth to tenth time I've heard that whales are coming up to boaters and saying, I need help. And they'll find hooks in their lips and, and just... And, and the fins and, and things like that. So things that people need to know. People, yeah. people need to know that we need to do better. Or the same with our dogs. We need to get them trained. We need to get them socialized. If, if you live alone, that's really hard. Most people that have caregivers, hopefully will have an animal lover in the caregiver and they'll help with that also. Because it is our well-being. Our pets are our well-being. I think, Catherine, you touched on that. And and it really, really is. Catherine, would you like to add anything? Um, just, yeah, it's, it's the same as what Amina says, really. I mean, they really are amazing creatures. And um, I don't think people realise um, just how, how amazing they are, really. And mm. when you see it from a dog's point of view, it's, so our, our dog is actually a, a former street dog. I didn't know that when we originally got it, but she's from Trinidad. So she came, she was on the streets of Trinidad for six months. Then she uh, went to a foster mom. Then she was brought here. And then a foster mom had to emigrate. And then we had her. And she had an absolute host of problems, really, bless her. But when you think about where she's come from right. and what she's had to go through to get here, we really, you, you've got to see, I always try and see it from the dog's point of view or from the Thank you. animal's point of view. Yeah. Wow. Wow. What Really yeah. great information that's been shared today. As always, thank you so much, Catherine. We have thank your information you. up for people to contact you, but if they can't read the banner or they're listening on a podcast platform or a radio station, can you please give your contact information and who you'd like to reach out to you? Yeah, basically, it's probably easier to get me through my website because uh, that's quite easy to remember. So that's www.mutlis.me.uk. And Mutlis is spelled M-U-T-T-L-E-Y-S. So, yeah, if anybody's got any queries uh, about anything relating to pet first aid, if I can be of any help any way, I really do reach out because it's really important to me that we that we educate people so they know how to help their pets, really. That's quite important. I agree. Absolutely. And I have to say that whenever somebody from the UK speaks, it sounds so great. I just love this. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> There's our entire motivation, Catherine. Not your expertise, not your voice. <laughs> it's just the voice. I just wanted to hear you talk. <laughs> the voice. No, it's the, it's How the that whole that are we? I agree with her completely. That's why I get to say say all this. It's like I agree with her completely. And and I come from English origin, so you know, I I, I spend as much time in country as I could. So yeah, well, we, I haven't really got much of an accent, but um, <laughs> well, well, I don't think I have where I'm from. We have yeah. quite broad accents. In Australians do. say the same thing. Yeah. You know, the ones <laughs> down under. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm going to put up your banner. What's the best way for people to contact you and who should reach out? 
bridgingworlds.us. Everything you want to know, my background, my uh, experience with vet medicine. I am here to do the same to help you coexist with everything. Bugs, bees, we're still working on mosquito coexisting reasons and your pets of any kind. I'm lucky to have worked in a wildlife sanctuary for 10 years with lions and many other big things uh, that were there because no one wanted them in Hollywood anymore or thought it would be a great pet, a uh, Burmese python. No, they're not. So I can help you in a lot of ways. Bridgingworlds.us. My resume is all there. Love to hear from you. Thank you very much, Amina. I appreciate it. So we'll be signing off for now. Thank you to each and every one of you. And I've been saying this all day. Our thoughts, our prayers go out to anyone who is really struggling anywhere in the world. There are so many different issues that people are overwhelmed. People are homeless with the hurricane here in the States that's continuing on. And I know there's issues in the UK with the price of petrol and food and, and the value of the pound. So it doesn't take much to find an issue somewhere. So our hearts go out to everyone. Remember, you're not alone. Please reach out to someone. There is definitely someone who cares. You've got three people right here who care. So thank you again. I wish you all a beautiful weekend and I'm and I'll see you backstage. Yeah. Absolutely. Can't thank wait. you, Catherine. Bye. So, thank you, Catherine. <laughs> thank bye you everyone. Thanks. Bye. See you. Bye.